It is good, the Bible says, that we do understand the time and the seasons that we're in because it was the sons of Issachar who was discerning of the times. And I believe, amen, that this is the hour, amen, for us, amen, Pastor Tabitha, uh, Pastor Fletcher, that we need to, prophetess, know, amen, the timing of God. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, to everything, woman of God, there is a time, a purpose, and a season. We need to understand the timing of God, uh, where our lives are concerned, and the season, and then also the purpose of time, knowing that we have been created for a purpose. Everyone that is in this building tonight, you have purpose in your life. You may not feel like you have purpose, but you have purpose. If God created you, amen, and he breathed into you, when he breathed into you, he gave you purpose. And so it is up to us to know, amen, the, the purpose of God for our life and, and the will of God for our life and exactly what it is that God is wanting to do through us and for us. In a very critical time, the Bible says that in the last days, amen, it will be perilous times. And perilous times mean critical times. It would be dark times. It would be times of apostasy where a people, amen, that was once with God will find themselves leaving God. It, it would be a time where people will no longer believe in God. It would be a time that people not only believe or not believe in God, but they will not want God. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's right. I said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yeah. The Bible said, taste and see that the Lord is good. And when you have tasted the Lord and you have seen that he is good, it is hard to break relationship with him. It is hard to break relationship with a God who is able to heal, deliver, and make free. It is hard, amen, to break from a God that blesses you when you don't even deserve to be blessed. Amen. It is hard to break from a God that put up with us, amen, when everybody else decides to walk. It is hard, amen, to leave a God, yes. amen, who has been with you and on your your side, That's amen, right. since day one. It is hard Come on. to leave a God that will never leave you nor forsake you. But the Bible says he'll be with you always, even until the end of time. It is hard to leave a God that gave his life, amen, for you, that bled and died, suffered for you, amen, didn't deserve it, amen, but he was so worthy, amen, and then he considered us to be worthy. The blood of Jesus still works. Yes, yes, yes. It is hard yes. to leave a God. Amen. That in spite of what we do, uh -huh. he's still there. Yeah. He's a God of many chances. They yeah. say second chance. I say he's a God of many chances. I want to talk to you tonight what I believe. Amen. I've been here and I was seeking the Lord and asking God, what would you say to this house? Because every house has a different message, but it all comes together. Amen. Yes. The, the, the disciples, they had different testimonies, but it all concluded to the same thing. Right? And so God is speaking expressly to the church. Come on. I, I believe He is because the Bible says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And so I believe that God is speaking to the church. And I don't believe, amen, everything. Amen. That is being said in this hour is God. The Bible said many voices are in the land. So even though a lot of things are being spoken, we've got to learn how to dissect and discern what is God and what is not God. That's right. And it's only when we spend time in his presence that we're able to hear from him. It's only when we have a prayer life that we're able. I don't even know how God talks to you when you don't even talk to him. I, I don't even know how you can represent God and be a messenger of God and prophet lie, amen, on the behalf of God. When you don't even have a prayer life, the first step to ministry is praying. That's right. That's right. He called the disciples to pray. He taught them how to pray. He never taught them how to prophesy or preach, but he taught them how to pray. Right. Can I say that one again? That's he right. didn't teach them how to prophesy or pray but, or, 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 or preach, but he taught them how to pray. Yeah, and he right. said, our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed would be thy name. So his name is hallowed. It's sacred, and we just can't use the name 
name of the Lord. Amen. Any way we see fit. We've got to put respect to his name. Tell somebody, put some That's respect right. to his name. Oh, y'all ain't talking tonight. I'm going to talk to you. Come on, tell somebody else, put some respect to his name. Yes. Yes. His name is sacred. Don't get it twisted. And not to be mishandled. Right. Never to be mishandled. And then he gives us under shepherd. Amen. That we also should follow root or follow suit in respect in them. I believe that there's another level of respect that is returning to the church. Amen. That's right. I believe that there's another level of respect. I'm taking my time, but then I'm getting ready to go. Well, I believe that there is another level of respect that is returning. Notice I said returning because the respect for the church has been lost. And one of the reasons why the respect for the church has been lost is because of how some of us have represented the church. That's right. We have, no, not re misrepresented the church. Come on. And so because of how we have misrepresented the church, there is a great disrespect towards the church. So to the point where people don't even want to hear about our God. So to the point people don't even want to come to our places of fellowship because of how we have misrepresented him. The Bible says that the gospel be here is is here to them that are lost. But he also told us, amen, let your light so shine that men will see your good works That's and what glorify said. the Father. Yes. How he is glorified is by our light. Yes. How he is glorified is through our works. Amen. He tells us to work out our soul salvation with fear and trembling. So with that being said tonight, as I said, I'm going to talk to you very briefly and then I'm going to come back. But I'm sure, amen, that you're going to be blessed tonight because you're going to be fed tonight. Amen. amen. So as it would be fitting, amen, to the occasion and to the mandate that God has given to you, I begin to hear God and I begin to write down what I heard. And normally I try to follow the notes, but we'll see how far that goes. Amen. Amen. And I write down the notes because it's so good when you're hearing from God, you get your pen, right? Amen. And you begin to write down what you're hearing God. Because a lot of times when we stand up here, as you know, preachers and leaders, amen, we forget some of what God said. Amen. And then we missed it, but we're going to make sure that you're fed on tonight. So I just want to say again, amen, that we're in an hour, amen, where, amen, God is speaking expressively. And one of the things I believe that God is saying is that life is filled with swift transitions. Life is filled with swift transitions and sudden changes. Swift transitions and sudden changes. I believe, amen, that we're in the hour of the suddenly. I believe, amen, that there are some things, amen, if we're not careful, we're going to miss in this season because we have not prepared for it in this season. There is a suddenly that is taking place even now as we sit here in this atmosphere. We're in an hour of acceleration and activation. We're in an hour of acceleration and activation. Yeah. And God is realigning us. Amen. So the three things that God is doing in the aligning of us is that there is an alignment and there is an advancement uh, for the abundance of God. That God is bringing his people into alignment where he is making us again one with him. When he created us in his image, the Bible said that he made us one with him. He made us in his likeness. He breathed into us and we became a living being. Amen. But we became the image of God formed in the likeness of God. The Bible declares, amen, in the midst of uh, this swift transition and the sudden changes, amen, that the earnest expectation of creation is in agony waiting on the arrival of the sons and daughters of God. I got to say that again according to Romans, the 8th chapter, amen, that the earnest expectation of creation is waiting in agony and labor pains there waiting for the sons of God that is you and I those of us that have been blood washed those of us that have been born 
born again. The sons, amen, the earnest expectation. Who are they? They may be your unsaved loved ones, the sinners, the backsliders. It may be the woman with the issue of blood. It may be the blind Bartimaeuses, come on, that have not found their way to Christ because they're not Preaching. able to see Christ. The earnest expectation is waiting on the manifestation. The power that we say that we have to heal the sick and to raise the dead. Come on, there is a creation that is waiting on the manifestation for us to come forth with power. Come on, this is an hour that we cannot be short fused. Yes, yes, We've yes. got to be full of the Holy Ghost. That when they see us, they don't see us, but they see God. That they see His
right now, but you will mount up. You may be going through a storm right now, but you will mount up. You may be going through a hard situation right now, but you will mount up. Tell your neighbor, it won't always be like this. Come on, he will perfect that concern in me. Sooner or later, it's going to work in my favor. It's turning to tell somebody, I can feel a turning already. I had y'all sitting there. three-day gathering and the Lord gave me a couple of months ago he said delivery on demand that means no longer being delayed that means you you don't you don't get to choose when you want to do God and when you don't want to do God you you don't get to choose whether or not you want to obey or you want to go you don't get to choose the Bible said, because you didn't choose me, but I chose you to go, to go, to go, to go, to go, and bring your fruit, and let your fruit shall remain. So the mandate in this hour is that we deliver. But we can only deliver when we've been delivered. Maybe the problem why we're not able to deliver is because we have not been The Bible said iron sharp and iron, but he also told Peter, Peter, the devil desires to sift you as wheat, but I've already prayed for you. He said, and then I prayed that after you've been converted, that you go and you convert others. When you've been delivered, then you can deliver others. So delivery on demand, that means that I have no more abortions. That I no longer abort my vision, my ministry. That I no longer abort, amen, my business or the idea that God has given me. It means that I no longer have miscarriages. Not able to go full term because I don't have enough wind in my womb to carry. Because I will not fulfill or complete the process that gives me the power to produce. Gotta have some kind of wind in your womb in order for you to push forward. The Bible said that they were brought to the place of delivery, prophet assurance, but they could not birth or produce because they had no they had no power. All they had was wind that was full of gas. I'm convincing this hour we need a bowel movement oh, my God. <laughs> while we're still waiting on the God movement. We got to get some mess up out of us. Amen, my God. God's got to purge us. He's got to purify us. He's got to clean us before he can bless us. I am convincing this our prophetess Lynn that the greatest investment is chastisement. Uh, somebody missed me on that one. I believe that chastisement is the greatest investment for your advancement. I'm going to say that one more time. When I was coming here, Papa the Sharon, I heard the Lord say, he says, that chastisement in this hour is the greatest investment for your advancement. My God. Come on. Chastisement. Because he chastens those that he loves. Yes. So chastisement is the greatest investment for your advancement. That's good. Caution is good. Glory. Being cut is good. Yes. Yes. He's got to cut us in order to cultivate us. Amen. Character. Yes. Right down. Right down. Is good. Right down. Good. So here we are with this mandate, delivery on demand, and we're going from travail to triumph. And we're going from travail to triumph. I told you I'm going to try to take my time. Amen. But we're going from travail to triumph. And the good thing about travail that is different from prayer. Because when we are praying, we, we say words to God. And, we, and that's good. But when you begin to travail, you take up a whole nother, uh, a, a, a 
of strength. There, there's a whole other push that happens in travail. You start moaning and groaning. It's like you start giving your, it comes from your belly. It comes from your soul and not just your mouth. The Bible said that when Zion travail, she bore forth. I believe in this hour that God is raising a people. Come on, that's going to travail. Do you not know that your trials and tribulations are broken a travail in your belly? Let me tell you something. Don't despise your trials. Don't despise the testing that God has you in in this hour. Because your trials and your testing and your tribulation is broken and building a travail in your spirit. There is something that God is doing in our room. Come on, it's nothing like a room in room.
good in this place. Something that's getting ready to happen. There's a breakout that is getting ready to happen. There's something that is getting ready to hit the earth and I'm excited. How many of you, excited? How many of you can sense something about to break forth? How many of you can sense something about to break forth? Before we get to Ezekiel the 37th chapter, I want to go to Ezekiel the 3rd chapter. And the first verse, and he says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat thou that thou findest. Eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. I want to read that verse again. It says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. The third verse, the second verse, he says, So I opened my mouth. And he caused me to eat that roll. The third verse says, And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thou belly to eat. Cause thou belly to eat. And fill thou bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. I want to stop for a minute before we go to Ezekiel the 37th chapter. The 37th chapter. What I found interesting about this particular text, uh, Apostle, is that uh, sometimes we want to do a great work for God, but we don't have an appetite for God. Before you can fulfill the assignment in God, you have to have an appetite for God. I, I just lost the whole church right there. Before you can fulfill the assignment of God, you have to have an appetite for God. And so I like how this opens up. And because he's charging, amen, this prophet Ezekiel, uh, son of man, it is the spirit of the Lord that is speaking to him. And he's saying to him, he's like, before we even get things started, let's establish the first thing. Let's keep the main thing, the main thing. He says, I want you to eat the whole roll. I believe as a prophet of God that our responsibility is to eat the whole roll, which is the word of God. I believe, amen, that before, amen, we can represent God, we've got to only, not only read God, but we must become God. And so God wanted to establish something with the prophet. He didn't want him to be another. He, he didn't want him to be average, uh, but he wanted him to have a relationship with this word. He wanted him to uh, identify with his assignment. Uh, and so he says to him, before you can go and fulfill the assignment, I God to create in you an appetite. How many of you have an appetite? Come up for the assignment that God is. Because if you have an appetite for the assignment, you won't be so quick to abandon the assignment because you have an appetite for what you fall in love with. It's hard to wake or walk away from. So he says to him as he charged him, he says, Ezekiel, I need you to eat the whole roll because I'm getting ready to use your mouth. 
know. Uh, you don't pick and choose out of the Bible. Amen. What is convenient for you? What fits you? Come on. We we'll eat a little bit of this, but then we don't want to eat a little bit of that. Come on. We got to eat the beans along with the collard greens and Come the macaroni on. and cheese. Come on. Some of us would scoot the black eyed peas over to the side and Come say, on. give me the mac and cheese and give me the collard greens and the potato salad. But you got to eat the whole roll. Come on. From Genesis to Revelation. Come Because of their disobedience. But here 
God is now challenging this prophet as I believe that God is doing many of us in this hour that he is challenging us because without challenge there could be no change I believe that he is being charged and Lady Lucretia I believe that there is a charge amen from God that is happening in this hour I remember the saints used to say this charge I must keep come on many of us need to lift our hands tonight and say this charge I must keep come on it doesn't matter who come or who go this charge I must keep come on I don't know about nobody else but this charge I must keep come on I cannot let my assignment die I cannot allow the anointing on my life to die come on I cannot allow my ministry to die this charge I must keep from hell or high water this charge this charge I must keep you're doing good but just bring it down a little bit tell somebody else this charge I must keep come on I don't care what they say I don't care what they do but this charge I must keep come on the apostle Paul said it best I will let nothing separate me from the love of God come hell or high water come on whether it be tribulation or persecution whether it be high or dead come on perilous times or perilous come on demonic activity wickedness come on injustice come on I will let nothing separate me from the love of God come on lies being criticized astralized come on I will let nothing separate me from the love of God they don't want you to be a part come on of their clique they don't even want you in the fellowship but I will let nothing separate me from the love of God they don't want to hear your songs they don't want to hear your testimony they don't want to hear your messages but I will let nothing separate me from the love of God come on may be sick in your body and may not have a, a good doctor's report but I will let nothing separate me from the love of God asking God three times can you remove this thorn from my flesh but nevertheless I will be done I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God what happens when you're praying for something and it hasn't happened yet do you go in the tower do you walk away do you th call it quits no I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God come on your house is in foreclosure come on your car is about to be repaid come on your son in jail come on your daughter hanging out on the block but I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God come on marriage in turmoil come on adultery is at an all time high but I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God call prayer meeting and half the leaders don't show up but I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God come on appreciation service and ain't nobody appreciating you but you remember the bills you paid come on the groceries you bought come on the sacrifices you made but I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God can you put your hands together and come on and say this charge This charge I must keep. And so we see here, amen, that the winds were able to carry what was big and what was heavy. The four winds were called upon to gather Israel back together. There is a wind that God is releasing in this hour. Come on, that is causing the people of God to gather together. That's why I really don't, I, 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 I really don't loosely call our services conferences. Because conferences is just a coming together and you share your idea and I share my idea. We share our idea. But when it comes to the spiritual aspect of God and God is doing a thing in the midst of us, it will always be a gathering. Or it will be a revival. And how many of you know it's both of them? That God is gathering us so that he can revive us. And so the Bible said that there is a wind that went out. And even now, God said there is a wind that is blowing in the earth. There is a wind that is blowing in our houses. And this wind is causing us to come together and gather. This wind breathed life. It was breathing life into those that have become slain. Ezekiel 37 and 9, it was blowing life into those that have been slain. Be not weary in well-doing. 
Sometimes being a soldier is not be easy. Come on. You're going to get some battle scars. Yeah. That's right. You're going to get some stabs in your back. Yeah. Come on, you go. There's some weapons that's going to come against you. There, there's some things that you're going to go through. Come on, that is going to wound you. But he was saying here, he says, listen, even though Israel had become slain, God now took it upon himself because he is that kind of God that always seek to heal us and to help us. Yeah. The kind of God that we serve, he may be angry for a moment, for a short moment, but his intentions are always to heal us and help us. Yeah. He does not leave us hemorrhaging in our own blood. He does not leave us even in our mistakes. He does not leave us struggling in our proclivities and idiosyncrasies. He's going to always make a way of escape. The Bible said during times of temptation and testing, God will make a way of escape. And he will make an escape for us. So here they were slain because they had become defeated and destroyed by the enemy that they decided to make their God. Ah. Come on. What happens when the thing that you love and you turn from God? Sometimes we leave God for the thing. And what happens is that when we leave God for the thing, the thing that we left God for end up leaving us. And sometimes not only do that thing leave us that we left God for, but that thing will leave you and then it will turn to God. Come on. <laughs> I've seen it too, Apostle. I've seen where even I left God for something and then that something left me and turned to God. We've got to see and be very, 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 very conscious. The Bible said that we're not ignorant of the enemy's devices. He is a manipulator. He is a deceiver. And ain't nobody worth you leaving God for. I don't care how good it is. I don't care how good it feels. I don't care how good it sounds. I don't care how good it looks. Ain't nothing worth leaving God for. Live long enough and it'll be your testimony. Nothing and nobody is good enough leaving God for. So here they were slain. And it says here that there are four wings of God. That represent the four classifications of a prophet. Each one is led by the spirit of God. And these are represented by the north, the south, the east, and the west. Every wind of God blows. Let me tell you something. That while I was studying, I discovered that before there can be a move of God, there must be first a wind of God. That's right. For there could be a move of God, there's got to be a wind of God. Yes, yes. In other words, before we can see the presence of God, there's a sound that summons the sovereignty of God. That's why the praise and worship, they say, lift up your voices and praise God. They'll say, lift up your voice and worship God. Because there's always a wind that must come first. And that wind is the thing that introduces and invites the presence of God. What we want is the presence of God to come. We want to see a move of God without releasing the wind of God. The wind of God is the breath of God. And before God himself can show up, his, his pneuma has to show up. We call it the cabal of God. But before the cabal of God can be released upon us, which is the glory of God, there's got to be the rock of God, which is the breath of in us. We need the breath of God in our services. We need We need the breath of God in our gatherings. Don't you know, amen, that time is overrated for a jump and shout and you got a prophetic word? Come on. But it did not shift you. It did not change you. Come on. It did not push you. It did not transform you. We need something, come on, that's going to take us to another dimension in God. Come on, that's going to that's going to cause a stretching. Come on, we need something that's going to stretch our spirit. We're okay with being complacent and being comfortable. Come on, we're clapping our hands. Come on, as long as you don't place a demand on me. Come on, but it's time now. Come on, that we got to bend up our belly and open up our mouth and release a sound. Come on, up out of our feelings. Come on, we got to lift our voices. Because you don't even know that when you
you open your mouth, there is a wind, come on, that is coming from your inner being. Come on, if you deal with the Spirit of God, then the Spirit of God comes with the wind. Come on, when you walk the top, come on, things got to happen. Things got to change. Come on, when you release the word of God, the Bible said life and death.
But when that nation remains under God, that nation is covered by God. Yes. The Bible said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Yes. Yes, he said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And so on the day of Pentecost, they came together, prophetess, uh, 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 and they came together, apostle, come on. It wasn't this one with their little own set program. Come on, this one singing their song. You can have three people on the praise team, and you got all three, come on, with different mindsets. Come on. Come on here. But the Bible said where there is unity, there is strength. But a house divided cannot stand. Come on. And so when we are divided, we are powerless. When we are divided, we are weak. When we are divided, we are vulnerable. There was a story uh, about an enemy, amen, that was waiting. This is kind of like, you know, a little nursery rhyme story. But but I got a revelation out of it. You know how it's prophets. We can look at a movie and... We can read the little nursery book and get a get a revelation out of it. So it said that there were three pigs. And that the fox, he was desiring to devour them. But he knew that as long as they were together, he could not devour them. Because he could not swallow them whole. Imagine trying to swallow a cake whole. You got to cut that cake in pieces. And so he had to divide the cake. He says, I can't swallow them whole, but if they ever decide to disconnect, I can get them one by one, Amen. bite by bite. And so one day, after years, that's exactly what happened. And he waited because he knew it wouldn't be long. Do you not know that the enemy is waiting? Even for us tonight that came to this service, he can't get us as long as we're on the same page. Come on. Come on. As long as we all praising God, we all going after God, we're all serving God. But if he can separate us, if he can isolate us, he has already got us. Say it. You say, I'm not going back there no more. He already got you. When you have unforgiveness in your heart, he got you. When you have bitterness in your heart, he got you. When you full of rebellion and disobedience, he got you. But as long as you stay connected, because a three-fold cord is not easily broken. When there is unity, there is strength. And so the Bible says that they, and I'm almost finished, that they all came together on one accord. And they came together on one accord. And they had all things in common. And they were in the same place. I want you to hear this. And even though we've heard this for years. But listening to the revelation. They were all together. Tonight. Some of us. Our minds may be here. There and everywhere. But they were all together. Yes. They came together. They, was, they were. Amen. Uh, uh, praising together. They were worshiping. They were believing together. They had the same Let every major move of God in history 
glory was based upon the move of the wind of God. Acts 1 and 8, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. Somebody say tonight, I got power, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be my witness in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. There's a four winds right there. Come on, there's nothing off limits. Come on, when you're filled with the presence of God. Come on, there's a measure. Come on, that causes you. Come on, to have an abundance. Now, wherever you go, come on, you're able. Come on, to show forth the praise of God. Come on, you're able to run the race. Come on, without giving out a wind, without giving out a breath. Come on, that you're able to endure hardness as a good soldier. I want you to know.
demonstration, demonstration, and manifestation. Come on, tell them I feel activation. Come on, lay your hands on your belly. And come on, tell them spring up a Come on, spring up a well. Come on, tell them the whole Yeah. 
from Satan because you have allowed disobedience to divide you. It's not guaranteed that you're going to make it out. Instru God is big on instructions. Yes, he is. If he was not, he wouldn't have gave us these 66 books. And instructions provoke increase. Yes, it does. So if we be willing and obedient, we will eat the good of the land. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That's what he said. Prophecy to speak. And I'm closing now. To speak forth what is presently not. What is prophecy? It is to speak forth what is presently not. What is prophecy? To speak forth what is presently not. What is prophecy? To say that God's going to give you a house of cards to stand up. What is prophecy? To speak forth what is presently not. But we've got to have a prophetic eye in order to have a prophetic mouth. That's right. That's right. Because you cannot decree what you cannot see. That's right. That's right. And what you cannot see is what you cannot receive. So we see it first. Those that are prophetic understand what I'm talking about. God took the prophet over into a vision. And that's what God does to us a lot of times. He takes us into a realm. Do we not know that this is the hour, Jamal, that we are, God calls it the, 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 the double R factor. That we are supposed to. He says, I am a high and holy God. Watch this. He says, I am a high and holy God and I live in a high and holy place. I am a high and holy God and I live in a high and holy place. We are to be seated in heavenly places. Our greatest miracles are going to be seen in places that are not seen. Because right. we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is a leading agent. That's right. Faith is a following agent. Jesus. We walk That's it. by faith. Yes. That's it. So it is a following agent. May not see all of what God is saying, but I believe it by faith. That's it. That's it. Because that's without it. faith, it's impossible to please Him. That's right. Just because He said it, that's enough. That's enough. And then that He will use your mouth. You don't even have to wait for a prophet to prophesy to you. You can prophesy to your own situation. And God will honor, he will honor. what you say. Yes. Whatever you bind on earth. He'll bind it in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, he'll loosen in heaven. Can you put your hands together? Mm -hmm. So they were dried up and they had no more life. You'd be surprised at the people that are jumping and shouting and praising God, preaching, prophesying, that are dried up. That's right. <laughs> That's right. The Bible says bodily exercise profit nothing. No, nothing. The Bible says in Revelation that the church had a had a reputation of being great, but they were dead. You'd be surprised. People said that there's a movement of God. Something is moving, but it's not God. Said. Said. Everybody move when the music is playing. Said. To be honest, anything in this hour is able to move us. Even a lie. That's why he tells us not to be tossed and driven with every wind and doctrine. That's right. So we'll move with swift transitions. That's right. And if we're not careful, we'll be uprooted. And we'll find ourselves out of the will of God. Trying to use what God once gave us, but we lost. We cannot be like Samson who's shaken. And not realizing that the oil had left. That's right. Or be like David, a worshiper, worshiping, but no anointing. God is trying to get us full. He's trying to get us ready. He's trying to prepare us for what is to come. There is a wind that has been released in the earth. They had dried up, but God was breathing life back into them. These days that God gave you, Prophet Islam, I believe, is to resuscitate, to restore, to rebuild. The Bible says the thing that was shall be again. I want you to know that there is a change in the guards in this hour. I want you to know that there is a change in a season in this hour. 
that God is changing seasons, that God is changing seats, position and power is being transferred. We're in a time of transition and transfer. We're in an in-between place. But the place that God wants us to remain is in the realm in Him. Because when you do not remain in that realm, you break rank with God. To break rank with God is to fall out of relationship with God. When we fall out of relationship with God, then we cease from having revelation in God. We need God to be revealed to us in a great and mighty way. We need God to be so strong and so full in us that no matter the report that the doctor give us, we know by his stripes we are healed. It's hard for something to be revealed when you don't have relationship. That's right. Because it takes the voice of God to keep you strong, yeah. to keep you encouraged, to keep you in place. Psalms, the first chapter says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and that doth he meditate day and night. Meditation is our medication. My God. Meditation. They that keep their mind stayed on me. Medication. Peace. You know how many people desire to have peace? God knows. Got power, got position, but no peace. No peace. God knows they don't. Married, got children. The American dream. No peace. Yeah. Making good money, got all kind of degrees, but no, no peace. But when we have relationship with God, when we obey the will of God, we have everything we need. When a man woke up right before him, he said, there's no good thing here with hope from them that walk. And when a man ways please God, he said, I'll even make your enemies be at peace with you. Everyone standing to your feet tonight. There was a return of what was. He said, the thing that was shall be again. I want you to know tonight that if I be and I am a prophet of God, there is a fire that you're going to experience. And I may have to come back another time. I'm trying to pace myself. That would be wisdom. Because y'all already know me to walk up and down this aisle. And I'm not rushing, but tonight I just want to use wisdom. I'll be back again. But I had to give you what God has given me. Do not miss this time of visitation. Man of God, do not miss this time. Yeah, you lift your hands. Do not miss this time of visitation. I see a, a hunger, an appetite in you. And I hear the Lord saying tonight the assignment for me was to come. And for God.